All right, Matt, so recording is live, welcome. So again, today we're gonna get you a nice, quick, updated pass-through on Altruvation, and specifically, as a quick reminder, obviously I represent a lot of product lines in the Northeast, but I'm your rep here. I handle New Jersey, PA, upstate New York for our firm. We cover from Delaware to Maine, so the whole, whole Northeast is covered by us. Uh, and after today, this stuff will be put up on our YouTube so you guys will be able to use it across your team, across your branches. And then obviously let me know if we ever need to do any trainings for any of your customers and your contractors. That's kept me busy the past month and a half as well. We're doing a lot of these to keep right. the contractors up to speed. So quick reminder, uh, we're going to dive back through IAQ quick. Uh, we're going to clarify terminology being uh, re-clarified nowadays, thanks to ASHRAE and the CDC guidelines that are going out about UVC lamps versus UVGI technology. And we just want to make sure everybody's adhering to the standards. That way, anything else being talked about doesn't matter. We're only focusing on what's in the guidelines. So uh, that being said, uh, the biggest thing that I'm teaching your contractors, your customers, and obviously you guys is everybody should be asking the questions of when, where, and why. And specifically, that is only targeting three topic points that Altruvation helps with. Filtration, UV disinfection, and UV air purification. Uh, there's obviously other components of IAQ like humidity control and stuff like that, but Altruvation does not impact that. We're only focused on uh, clean air and those other components other companies can help you with. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I just showed this quick mock-up because... There's different types of tech. I'm going to show you on the next slide. Upper right-hand corner here, we're obviously always targeting filtration. I tell people all the time, you put UV in, but if you have a junky filter from Home Depot that some homeowners buy, what are you doing? So having proper filtration, we do have ionization technology that helps improve uh, air filtration. We'll clarify that. And then obviously helping people lay out the right UV solutions, whether it be uh, addressing coil application uh, and or air purification in the supply. So that's what we're going to dig more into today to clarify so people understand there is, you know, different phases you should progress through. Uh, so again, terminology wise, if you look at chapter 62 in the ASHRAE guidelines, or you look at the CDC, we have these uh, resources actually linked on our website. And I believe I sent you the links as well via email. So uh, ASHRAE was kind enough to make chapter 62 specifically public. Uh, so you can actually look at the PDF document just on UV. Whether it's them or anybody else, long story short, UVGI is the official term that people should be using when you install UVC lamps into an HVAC system. Uh, UVGI is not possible without using a UVC wavelength spectrum. There's all different wavelengths of UV light. You can have UVA bulbs and UVB bulbs. They mean nothing. If you're going to follow the standards and follow the guidelines, everything has to be UVC wavelength. So that's what UVGI stands for. It's ultraviolet germicidal radiation, but it's not possible unless you're using the most destructive form of UV light, which is the UVC class. And then there's other terms like PCO and ionization. I already hinted at ionization is basically like putting a thunderstorm inside your HVAC system. It electrically charges the particles, helps them stick together, helps the filter do a better job. I'll explain that in a second. PCO in the middle there has been popular for years now. Uh, actually, ionization existed before PCO, and then PCO got popular, and then ionization started making a comeback for some people who don't want to actually work with UV at all. But again, per guidelines, per standards, per clean air, this is what's been approved. This is what's been proven. This is what we're going with. So PCO, and I'm going to show a quick video here, that's basically your, your photocatalytic oxidation. That's like your add-on to basically improve and go beyond what a standard UVC lamp is going to be able to do. Uh, so obviously we're targeting things like airborne particles, airborne VOCs, uh, odors, all types of other airborne pollutants. So I'm going to switch the screen share quick over to the video and let the animation explain it. And that usually helps people wrap around. And again, this is all public on our YouTube channel. So you guys can always use this later. So I'm going to play this now. Here's how it works. The UV Photomax Advanced Oxidation Module is coated with an exclusive titanium dioxide formulation. When UV light is applied to the surface, the titanium dioxide coating becomes energized, causing it to release electrons. The electrons then combine with oxygen to create what are known as superoxides. The titanium dioxide then collects replacement electrons from moisture in the air to become charged particles known as hydroxyl radicals. Together with the superoxides, a powerful photocatalytic oxidation, or PCO field, is created. 
As odors, germs, mold, and other VOC organic molecules approach the PCO field, they are disassembled as the oxidizers pull electrons from them. The purification process is completed with the remaining molecules recombining to form simple water vapor and trace amounts of carbon dioxide. Ultravations advanced oxidation process. All right, so long story short, you can put a UV lamp in. This, if you're ever applying PCO, I consider that your, your major upgrade, your major accessory, because that's targeting airborne. So that's something you put in the supply. You don't even talk about PCO if you're dealing with coil applications, dealing with surface, dealing with keep the coils clean inside of HVAC system. PCO never comes up until you start obviously addressing air supply application. And I'll clarify that in a little bit more when we start comparing the different product applications that you guys have access to. Uh, the other important thing on here is to help people understand what ionization does. No audio, this is just an animation as well, but this helps you guys understand because we have ion generators. Because ionization existed before PCO and then made a comeback, it is important to still clarify because our higher end tech, like a lot of our competitors, includes ionization along with the UVC light as well. So a lot of companies are now bundling it to give you maximum tech exposure. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to play that one now and no audio. This is just, I'll, I'll talk through it. So this is just showing our ion generator. It's emitting negative and positive ions. And like I said, just think about an electrical thunderstorm in the sky. After a lightning storm, after a thunderstorm, the air smells different. Well, because it's, it's cleaning the air. Uh, but part of that process also is there's literally an electric charge being applied, creating this neg neg negative and positive attraction. And these micro particulates that we can't see, are actually helping basically getting, I want to think about glue to each other. And that helps your filter catch more. So some particulates are so small that most filters can't catch them. And now obviously if you're using a better class filter, our filters, for example, are only MERV 11, MERV 13 class filters. So uh, have you been able to see this animation the whole time? Yep. yep. Cool. So I just like to remind people what ionization does, uh, because again, when I get into the, some of the higher end products, for example, one of our top competitors is the, uh, you've heard of probably the Remy Halo from RGF. Uh, you yeah. ever hear that term? Yeah. So they, they have a, they're popular. They've done a great job marketing. And they're obviously one of our top competitors against Ultravation. We have a product that competes against that. Actually, it, it's actually stronger and better than theirs, so, which is a win for us. But it's given us a lot of great market exposure, so I always I have no problem calling them out and saying, hey, good job, guys. <laughs> so now that being clarified, those are your three other – those are your three technologies that everybody's throwing around right now, but it's root core. UVGI is what we really care the most about because that's what the ASHRAE calls out. And again, you have to have UVC light. Uh, this image is taken directly out of chapter 62, out of the guidelines. So as you can tell, it's a really poor mock-up image, but long story short, they, they remind you in that chapter of the handbook, we target surface and we target airstream. That is it. I have all the ASHRAE links. If you ever need them, they're on our, our firm's website too as a resource for ultravation. We have a direct link to the chapter 62. We have a direct link to their official ASHRAE recommendation announcement. And we also have a direct link to CDC's guidelines, which specifically calls out the use of the UBC wavelength. So this slide is very, very important. This is clarifying why it has to be UVC. So per the graph here, there's lots of different UV light. You got everything coming from the sun, x-ray machines, the visible light, et cetera. And there are some products out there trying to promote UVA and UVB. However, UVC has been- Can I ask you a question on one okay. of those products? Is that Fields Manufacturing or the UVA? I don't know. You know, if, if everybody's, if you've been talking about field controls? Yeah. I don't know a ton about all of their products. It's hard to like obviously study up on every single person's products. They might have some using that, but again, here's the thing. UVC, thanks with being so powerful, even our lamps that have our UVC lamps, they give off some UVA and UVB frequencies too because the UVC okay. is, is so strong. So the most important thing here per the guidelines is UVC is proven to be the most destructive form of UV light. This is what renders live things lifeless so great if they're saying oh hey this we also have uva and uvb great i don't I, that's wonderful extra fluff but you better have a uvc class lamp 
at the core of that product or else you're not going along with the ASHRAE guidelines and what the CDC recommends. So that's a, that's a great question. A lot of people are like, oh, it was all different. People just think UV is UV. And this is why we really got to clarify this stuff when we do these trainings, because again, it's going to kill things. It's going to break things down. And uh, more importantly, it's all about potency, right? So this purple sphere here, for example, at the very center, is picture the very tip, the end of a bulb. So we're just showing you how light emanates outward from a bulb. Well, that's why UVC is so important. Within 12 inches or less, you have maximum potency within that distance of that bulb. We can't guarantee that level of microwatt potency with a UVA or UVB class bulb. It's gotta be a UVC. So when people right. watch these types of trainings online and they see somebody on Amazon trying to push an air purification product using a UVA or UVB bulb, I'm like, nope, sorry, you're not using the most destructive form of UV light. It has to be a UVC. And honestly, in our industry, whether it's RGF, Ultravation, and field controls, if they're applying products in this HVAC system, they better be UVC. It should be, to last time I checked, an industry standard. So I always want to make sure we clarify that. Again, I don't know their entire product line, uh, but hopefully they're making sure the lamps that are in those devices are UVC. Because we use, we use the same technology in our water. We have water products too. And those, those are still UVC bulbs inside the uh, inline units to help basically break down waterborne pathogens. So uh, same technology, just a different application. So again, just to clarify terms for you, if I have a product using UVC wavelength bulb in it, then great. I can safely say, as far as HVAC is concerned, I'm applying UVGI technology on the coil if I put a UVC bulb product on the coil, if I'm putting a UVC product with a UVC lamp inside the airstream in a supply duct or in the plenum, then great, I'm applying UVGI technology to the airstream. So that's why we're trying to clarify UVC versus UVGI because a lot of people have not looked at the handbook in a long time. <laughs> uh, right. But that, that is the official way we're describing this to help people understand that UVC is the wavelength of light. UVGI is the actual technology application that can't be done unless you use that lamp. So um, that makes sense. Pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I try, sure. I try and simplify everything. <laughs> so that being said, it doesn't matter if it's residential or commercial, the same explanations here as I'm, I gave these examples here apply. So I'm, I'm doing residential coils versus commercial coils. I'm applying UVGI technology because I'm using a UVC wavelength bulb. Right. So, okay. And the good thing is, for the most part, most competitors should be using relatively the same style bulbs. Like Philips is one of the biggest bulb manufacturers in the world. And they manufacture probably 80% of our bulbs uh, is we have a manufacturer's partnership with Philips to design and manufacture the bulbs that we patented. Um, and that's the importance of this slide too. So not all bulbs or, or lamps, if you want to call them that way, are created equal. So the average lamp, especially residentially, all lamps, you'll see everybody saying, oh, you got a two-year warranty on the bulb. Well, that's true. It's warranted to stay lit up for two years, but that does not mean you have a life cycle of two years. I've, oh, I've been training on this for years. Nobody understands that. Everybody says, oh, it's a two-year warranty. I'm like, no, it's a two-year warranty to make sure the bulb you plugged in stays lit up. But the average UV bulb, which we sell them as well, have a 9,000 hour life cycle, which means after 9,000 hours, AKA one year, you've already burned through 40 to 60% of the potency of that bulb. So those types of bulbs need to be on an annual PM cycle. Then there's our T3 class bulbs. So our T3, we patented that, we designed that. We took that 9,000 life cycle bulb and then encased it in a quartz sleeve and then trapped the gas in between those two layers to insulate it. So why is that cool? Well, one, the bulb is protected. Two, you have no, you have no problem dealing with temperature issues. So right in spring and summer when the cooling systems are kicking on, you're blasting cold air through the duct, past the coil, past these bulbs. If the bulb is not protected, you're going to inhibit the bulb's ability to reach you know, peak burn cycle. So the advantage of insulating it and protecting it this way ensures that the bulb always burns at peak performance. And that gives you the most amount of UVC wavelength light coming off. That ensures your energy efficiency stays the same, right? You're not needing extra power during a really, really chill cooling cycle in the middle of the summer, the bulbs are just glowing and doing their thing. So this graph in the bottom right just helps that people understand that. And again, we have non T3 bulb products. We tell them, Hey, fine. If you're okay with a anywhere from 50 upwards to just below 80% burn efficiency, 
then go with the cheap standard 9,000 know, hour bulb. But if you want to reach peak performance and here's your, here's your tip, and you want to run a two year PM cycle, then you're good with a T3 because the T3 design ensures you have an 18,000 hour life cycle bulb. So I only have to change these bulbs every two years now. So they, a lot of guys have figured out from a cost effectiveness, they'd rather just offer the T3 product, be done with it, put the person on a two year bulb change and they get a better performance out of the bulbs as well. So, and again, that technology, we have that available residentially and commercially. Actually, T3 is pretty much standard on our commercial products. We're not messing around with that stuff. So okay. that's important clarification. Not everybody has this. So again, we have the basics too, but not everything's the same. Um, this is a great graph that I had. We have this actually in our commercial literature, and that's where I took this from. So this is a great DIY understanding the science behind UV. All right. So blue, picture blue being coil surface concerns and green airstream concerns. So my point here is that if I'm just putting lamps on a coil, great. I can handle things like streptococcus and all these other types of surface area uh, contaminants. But as I climb this graph up towards the top, I'm getting more airborne concerns. These are airborne viruses like influenza or that super dangerous virus, echo virus, right? This was more dangerous than even, even Corona. So the point here is if I just have a lamp coil, you know, a lamp on my coil, great. I'm getting some help because the, you know, the, the air is passing by as the lamp is uh, keeping the coil clean and I'm getting some airborne disinfection, but you're not going to get a maximum disinfection rate. So this goes back to that question of, you know, when, where, why, and what I'm solving for. So if somebody has concerns with airborne viruses, then you need to be addressing the air supply as well as the coil. You should not be talking about just coil application only. So this is an important thing for you guys and your future sales teams to help them understand like, okay, great, I could slap a lamp on the coil and this will handle a lot of stuff. But if I have concerns with airborne pathogens, airborne viruses, we need to be talking about airstream targeted products as well. So I love this graph. It's, it came out of our commercial education because we use that for obviously everything from museums to libraries to, I mean, actually this morning I was talking with the New York's, we had a huge call with the New York City uh, Sanitation Department. Those guys are you know, trying to protect their buildings and their personnel. So uh, those are unsung heroes right now in New York since sanitation is a big deal. So yeah. these companies are taking us seriously. The government's taking us seriously. Uh, any questions on this slide? No, but, but basically what you're saying, for every job, they, sh they should be wanting to sell two UV lights, one for the coil and one for the air. Fighter. Yeah, I'll clarify that more because not all products are designed the same way, right? So actually, I'll get into that here. So like residentially. So there's lots of different ways you can target things, right? Uh, large particulates, yeah, we're going with filtration. You want to improve some more micro particulates, that video you saw in ionization, right? We could put an ion generator in there. That'll help improve some of that. You start wrapping around the sphere here and you go into the more molecular and biological level. As the last graph explained, if I have concerns with stuff getting on old coil and possibly growing on old coil, then great. I can deal with stuff like here, the M series, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain each of these more. That's our, our product for ductless and mini splits. Um, that's the only thing you can really upgrade on those things. Those are like Petri dishes on a wall. We even have right. port we have portable stuff that people don't have duct work and they don't have a ductless. Uh, this is a complete portable air purifier you can plug right into the wall and stick in your office or wherever. Um, and then we have our you know throwaway entry level stuff. It's called our advantage. And then we move up to scale into our in duct solutions, which is what we're talking about. And uh, and that we have the ability on our higher end in duct solutions to piggyback coil lamps so that you you can power two devices off of one wiring job. And I'll explain that here in a second. Uh, this okay. uh, contractors love this because not every competitor will do this on their designs. So here, if you're thinking about like a, like when you guys offer stuff, do you guys offer like good, better, best, or how do you guys package things? Yeah, I, I've been, I've been just going with like good and better anymore. I, I'm, I'm tired <laughs> of, it's just, I'm trying to like upsell things. So, yeah. you know. Well, and, and I throw the word upsell out the window. It's just a matter of, you know what? Listen, this is going to get you something, but this is the better solution. So just get like, do you want to at least get your foot in the door? Great. Do something like this. But really, this is your better solution, right? So to answer that, the Advantage is a great product. That's what this is. We are the first company that came out with a throwaway lamp design. So this is not the same lamp design as our higher end residential and our commercial stuff. Uh, but we do make this in a regular, you know, one year or two year life cycle. So per the notable options here, you can get this in a T3 model, 
or you do the regular, you know, annual cycle. It's a little bit cheaper of a bulb design. So we go, you know, non T3 or T3. And again, standard coil type products like this, you put them 12 inch or 17 inch, depending on how much coverage you need to get over the coil. Uh, the cool thing about it is it's a throwaway design. So all the wiring and electronics are in that little tiny black module. This is not like our higher end lifetime warranty model, which has lamp monitoring and everything else. So this is literally, I come back in a year or two years, if it's T3, take the screws out, grab that black module, pull the entire bulb and module out and throw it away. So it's a throwaway design. So when they put the new one in, you have another brand new warranty because anything wiring related or electrode related is inside that little black housing. So that's a all throwaway right. concept. And you don't have to install this with the PCO module either. So we talk about PCO and photocatalytic oxidation. I have some wholesalers that only stock the lamps and they stock the PCO as an add-on accessory. I have some wholesalers who say, you know what? I just don't want to create a question. I want to make sure if somebody installs this lamp over top of a coil, like it, right, right there on a plenum over a Z coil, for example, we're going to make sure they are go ahead and give them this entry level PCO option as well. So they get some of that air purification, some of that photocatalytic oxidation happening. So again, you don't have to bundle it this way, it's up to you. So there's a lot of scalable options there. The other issue though, is that each of these products have to be wired individually. There's no ability to daisy chain them. So that's something else too, right? This is entry level. I mean, literally, if I just sold you this Advantage module, it's right around the cost of one of our higher end bulbs. That, uh, no one's done that. So getting people in the door, that's the advantage of the advantage. It's very cost effective and it's scalable. So that being said, it's really primarily targeted towards coil recommendations, but if you add that PCO on, you're going to get a little extra help for the air purification for deodorization, but it's not a true whole house solution. And the cool thing though is whether it's this design or our higher ones you're going to see in a second, homeowners can't buy this stuff. Like this stuff is pro trade only. Ultravation only works through companies like you for the contractor. This stuff is not sold retail. So, you know, if the stuff is already in somebody's house, they have to work through a professional to get it exchanged and, and, and upgraded and swapped out. Okay. So that's the advantage. Uh, we did actually upgrade the advantage and said, great, if people just want to make sure they're getting maximum air purification, getting maximum PCO, we took the T3 version and then designed this apparatus. So you still have the carbon, but then we added on two extra sheets of metal that have that titanium dioxide on it. So now you have three times the surface area of PCO happening. So if I was saying a good, better, best, the entry level advantage is good. This is going to be definitely better. I could, I could plug this in as a better scenario and it's only available to T3 and you can get it in 12 or 17 inch. And obviously the, the apparatus is a little bit beefier. You got a lot more PCO going on here. So this one's going to get you a little more air purification happening. But again, if you're going for good to better and you're not even going to try and create a three tiers uh, process, then you're going to move into some other some of our other stuff. So you saw the advantage. This existed before the advantage, and this is our best coil application we have. I actually have this installed in my house. So the advantage of our higher end stuff is when it's signature series, it means it's lifetime warranty. So I have two of these lamps in my Z coil downstairs in my basement. So the Easy UV signature series is a lifetime warranty product. It has a built-in lamp monitoring, on-off switch, comes with a directional shielding, all the bells and whistles. And I have the ability to get this accessory lamp and plug it right in. So with one wiring job, I could power two lamps. So I get even more surface area coverage on my coil. And that's what I decided to do two years ago when I updated the HVAC in this house. Now, lifetime warranty, this is totally a coil targeted product, right? So I, granted, I'm showing you a classic A coil, but we know there's a lot of new compact Z coil designs. You could always take one of these and mount it the opposite direction and go across uh, the top of an A or a Z if you go with a long enough bulb and you have enough coverage over the coil surface. For me, I just said, well, I'm going with two because I can. So this is the better coil application that's lifetime warrantied versus the advantage. Now, the reason why I'd like to show this slide is this little add-on bulb. This is a standard SKU that you can add on to our higher end or residential induct solutions. And that's when I get to next year. So, this also I have in my house. I added this catalyst right at, the begin to, right at the beginning of the quarantine. So this is, again, lifetime warrantied. This goes in your duct supply. There's three strips of carbon on this. So I have three times the amount of PCO happening. And because it's carbon and not metal, there's no ozone byproduct. The carbon absorbs the ozone naturally. It's self-recharging. But the cool thing about our higher end lifetime warrantied induct st stuff here 
is that I can add that accessory bulb on. So if I didn't have what I already had installed, I could have just installed this in the, in, in the plenum to deal with my air supply and then added this coil lamp on, same exact accessory, uh, accessory skew model, and put this over my coil. So with one wiring job, I would wire the power to the catalyst. And then in the back side of this power head, I have an accessory jack that could power that lamp bulb. So back to my point on dealing with coil plus Airstream. I've got my service and I got my Airstream all being addressed in this type of bundle right here. So this would be your better solution regarding a zero ozone application in a residential situation. And yes, I can add on either a 12 inch or a 17 inch easy light to cover my coil as well. So this would be one of our higher end solutions for residential. If you're trying to you know, upsell somebody, give them the right solution, this is what you would go over there. And then since we were talking about the Remy Halo, this was our most advanced tech. So we came out with the Solaris a little while ago. We've always had uh, titanium dioxide treated metal surfaces before the carbon. But then when Remy Halo got popular, we said, great, they don't have carbon on that unit. So, but they do have ionization added in. So this is why we invented the Solaris to kind of one up that. So you've got your UV, it's a, it's a T3 class two year bulb. You've got your, uh, you got double the surface area happening for PCO. And we have ionization built into this. So this is also generating the ionization. We have four electrodes in there creating that negative and positive ionization. And the reason why I call this out is because again, lifetime warranty product, and again, per the notable options, I can add on that same 12 inch or 17 inch accessory bulb, just like the last two slides. So that's, this is our best solutions that we offer. And I call the Solaris the most right now, because if we're trying to cross reference against items like the Remy Halo or uh, another company, not field controls, but another company is the uh, APCO product. These are the Indux uh, products that they're actually using. And this will benefit you here. Let me do a quick share. And I have this PDF. I can send this to you if you needed this. But we created a cross-reference. So I said, okay, here's our Solaris. There's the Avco. There's the Remy Halo. The biggest competition right now is really the Remy Halo. They've done the best job on their marketing. So I'll just reference that one. So they're both called active PCO products here because there's no carbon. So there is technically an ozone byproduct. Most people don't care. There is a very, very, very small percentage of the population that doesn't like that, that clean room smell. Uh, so if you needed that, then you would go with the catalyst I already showed you. Or like I said, the APCO is a, almost there. It's, uh, but they have passive. It means passive because you have carbon. But again, uh, we have a beefier dual band bulb. We have actually, a, yeah, they have a single band bulb. So we have a stronger bulb in there creating more UV uh, benefit. The casing around the bulbs are different too. We have two layers thick of metal treated with the titanium dioxide for the PCO. So we have 200 square inches of surface area creating the treatment. They only have 26 because they have a cylindrical design. Uh, another big thing that I call out in here is everything's made in Vermont. So ours is higher end stuff, right? It's all metal, aluminum. We're not playing around with plastics. Uh, again, beefier PCO, better PCO. Ours is adjustable too. Theirs is also adjustable. Um, when you take our power head off, we have an adjustable module in there. You can adjust the amount of PCO being created and there's, you can adjust as well. But as far as we're concerned, we actually have a four inch adjustment range, really giving you a lot of options for square footage or CFMs. They only have a two inch. Uh, and when you adjust theirs, it actually blocks, uh, these slots here on their design get blocked. Well, our design, we don't do that. We want to still allow all the UV light to come out without blocking that PCO reaction. So our adjustability is a completely different design to make sure you're still getting all the UV light you wanna get as the air is passing through the ductwork. The other advantage here, again, higher end design, our power heads have built-in lamp monitoring on them. Uh, they'll notify you if there's a lamp problem, end of life notification, because you wanna change them every two years. Again, we have more ionization. They have two electrodes, we have four electrodes. We're generating twice as much ionization. And again, expandability, nobody's doing this. We are the only ones that are giving you the ability to simply plug and play a coil lamp onto this application. So for the contractors doing an install time, they only need to tap power off to power the Solaris in the duct, and then the Solaris will power uh, the bulb going over the coil. And right. again, higher end solution, we're lifetime. Uh, RGF did not make their Remy Halo lifetime. A lot of people don't look at the fine print. They only have a two year on their PCO module, a five year on the ballast, and there's no warranty on all the third, third party parts on there. We just say, hey man, it's lifetime, change the bulbs every two years. If there's ever a problem, all of our intelligence is inside that power head. So if something failed, we would just ship you a new power head 
you just plug that off and plug the new one on and you're done. So definitely some big improvements here on the design. So if that helps you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, it does. So, I mean, like I said, I, I have one customer, especially uh, I'm right now I'm in Cape May courthouse, Yep. Uh, which, you know, down by Cape May, if you're familiar with the oh, area. Yeah. Um, he's a, a big contractor down here and, he, and he's, when I first contacted you, he was contacting me with all this crap. He wants to find, uh, he wants good product. And like I said, he's an engineer and reads everything. So. Oh, perfect. I like those guys. Yeah. <laughs> so this is going to be a good fit for him. And he, he's, he does a lot of HVAC and he'll, he'll do well with it, but I got to get it to him. That's Did I right. send you this cross reference yet then? The one I just showed you? I don't think so. Cause I, I think he would geek out on that. So if he's an engineer, he, he would like something like that. And I guarantee you that'll probably trigger some more questions, which is probably, if he's an engineer, he asks a lot of questions, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I would definitely, I'll, I'll send you this after the call today because this answers a lot of questions and shows people there's a better design and a better quality application. And guys end up falling in love with the Solaris. Again, the Solaris is basically the same thing as the Catalyst, except the Catalyst does not have ionization on it. And we're using carbon instead of metal. So this is a true zero ozone passive PCO and the Solaris is an active PCO because there's no carbon on it, but it does have ionization. So technically, if I wanted to base my higher end products on technology, then I would go Solaris, but the catalyst is right there. It's just missing the ionization. And if I wanted ionization, then I would just add on our Orion generator as a separate product in my home supply here. Cause like I said, I have the catalyst in my house. And the only reason why I did the catalyst was because, um, I'm going to flip this house into a rental and I just never want to ever worry about a small chance or percentage of somebody being slightly concerned about ozone -y smells. So I said, you know what? Forget about it. I'm just going to throw the catalyst in and be done with it. I never have to ask the question. So, but uh, we're doing a lot of business right now on the Solaris from residential. So I, I, as an, uh, I, as a nation, if I'm saying, yeah. can't even talk. Um, that'll do for the whole house. You don't, that doesn't have to be in the return. That's actually, well, Yes. So here's the thing. If you're trying to get that maximum filtration we talked about, and I have a slide right. on the, on the Orion, uh, our generator, it is the Orion generator itself as a standalone product is recommended to be installed on the return, right? Cause you want to beef up, uh, that you have all that dirty air coming back into the system. Let's make sure we get it all clumped up and get the filter to catch as much as possible. So as a standalone product, yes, you recommend putting that on the, on the return. Now, granted, the Solaris is generating ionization. So it's already starting to happen you know, inside the home, inside the home's atmosphere. Will it be as potent by the time it hits the filter as a standalone Orion generator? Probably not, but you're still getting the technology. If they want maximum ionization at the point of the filter, I would still put a Orion generator in there. It depends on you know, what kind of customer you're at, right? I just want to tip my toe in the water or I want the best of the best. So, uh, and, I, and I'd be happy to train uh, your customer on this stuff too, just like we're doing today. So, okay, that's what this is. Like I said, this is what I've been doing for weeks. <laughs> uh, I represent a lot of other product lines, but it's been all observation. So uh, he may appreciate this product too. Uh, we've always had a portable air purifier. This has been through, oh God, six redesigns over 10 years. This is the UVP 6,000 now. And uh, this is great if somebody doesn't have ductless installed, they don't have ducted air systems, they just have a space, they just want to purify the air, or maybe they want to kind of beef up the purification going on in that room. So this is all nice stainless steel. It's only nine inches by nine inches and three inches tall. So it's a minimal footprint and it plugs right in the wall. The beauty of it is it's got a built-in washable air purify, or air filter in it. The UVC lamp is in there and you have a strip of carbon right at the front of the paneling here behind those cut out, you know, nice decorative holes. So the carbon's there for the PCO. It's a zero ozone product because it's carbon. You have the UV lamp and there's a filter in there. So you're getting a nice room targeting solution in place that's portable and can be moved around. So uh, I always like to remind people of this because there's, there's, there's applications I know where people don't have proper HVAC in all places of their houses. Like maybe they finished off a space over the garage and they never put proper HVAC in there. So I see that all the time. Yeah, I see or, it all <laughs> Or you got kids with like allergens and everything else. So maybe once you've put a full system in, if there's still for some reason a strange extra hindrance, maybe try that, put that in a target room. I've had contractors actually leave this behind on a job to prove to somebody that this technology works. And then they, you know, within a few days, they say, hey, call me back and tell me if you don't notice that space, you, you notice the air is better in that room. 
And then sure enough, they do. And then they can get into a proper install later. And they'll just take this product back and great. Let's design something for your actual duct work and everything else. Right. So that's portable. As I reminded you, we have a universal UV kit for ductless heads. Uh, the only thing that comes down to install on this one is all the bulbs are directional. So it, we have protective shielding all the way around the bulbs. So the light can only exit in one direction. And then the mount uh, endpoints swivel. So once these are adhered up inside the unit, then the contractor just spins the bulb casing to decide where he wants the light to shine. I always recommend coil. Most guys are doing coil plus blower wheel. But again, these things are petri dishes on the wall and the ductless market is huge. So the only time I've had an install concern is that small power supply. It is designed to be auto power sensing with lamp monitoring. So it's, the technology is nice, but sometimes you don't always have a place to stick it inside the size of the head you're dealing with, depending on the manufacturer. So sometimes we made that two-sided tape on the back side as well. So some guys will just put the module right up on top of the head right before it hits the ceiling and, and hide it up there. So, but again, from an install standpoint, we don't care how that unit was wired if you didn't install it. It'll automatically grab the power it needs and power those bulbs. And again, that's a one-year PM cycle. We could not cram our T3 technology design into his bulbs that small. So uh, that would be a PM uh, of a one year for that. So this is huge. We do a lot of business on these. There's your Orion generator. So as I was hinting, if you were looking for a standalone ionization product, this thing produces three times what our competitors do. We've cross-referenced it against, uh, uh, what's that chemical company that makes an ionizer? Um, New Calgon right. and all those guys. Mm -hmm. This thing is beefy. It generates a lot of ionization. So, I mean, I think their, their commercial model might still beat this out, but as far as residentially, uh, we have a single SKU item. It, it's, it's simple. I've had people even start applying this commercially. There, we do have UV kits uh, for ice machines and even PTACs. I have guys using that M-series on PTAC units, but uh, if they want to use ionization instead, I got guys using these on ice machines and PTACs as well. Again, the beauty of that design is you just flip those electrodes if you want to go you know, outside the unit or inside the unit. So if you don't have the space inside the unit, just flip the electrodes down, drill two holes to get them to slide into the system, into the ductwork on the return, and you're done. Um, so it comes down to the contractor and how he wants to install it. Hard mount it, magnetic mount it, we don't care. So the only thing you got to do when you come back for your PM is just double check the little bristle brushes on the ends of the tips, you know, clean them off, and right. that's it. So, and that's the same for everybody. So that's ionization, again, and we do all the filtration too, everything from straight throughs to right angles to support boxes. We'll paint to match everything, whatever brand of equipment the contractor wants. If they want that, they can get them galvanized. They can get them standard white. We we'll even do private labeling on the doors. I have a lot of contractors. They're using this for their better, best solutions because they like having the marketing done for them. But all of our stuff, we're only working with MERV 11 and MERV 13 class filters that we have designed because we want maximum indoor air quality. And we don't have the pressure drop problems that our competitors have because one, we're giving you 32 feet a filter inside of our pleated filter. So because of the increased surface area, we're not getting the pressure drops. Plus ours are woven and designed differently. I have literature on this, but we actually have pressure drop graphs that I, I send to the contractor to prove to him that, hey, don't be afraid of finally going beyond a MERB 8 class filter if you're really trying to help somebody with their indoor air quality, because here's the data, you can still pull it off and not have to design some kind of super system. So I was actually, I was going to ask you if you had a problem with coils freezing up, especially yep, a, lot, no. a lot of times these, these guys are not bringing back enough return air. Yep. You know. I, I'm, I'm fully aware. We, when I, the first time I looked at the pressure graph, I didn't know what I was even looking at. The, the, the engineer from the factory sent it to me. He's like, listen, send these to your contractors and you'll make them happy. <laughs> I said, okay. Because a lot of guys, they've stayed away from HEPA. HEPA is the worst. I mean, they're, right. those things are so tight. So guys have stopped at MERV 8 for their highest end filters. And you're not going to be, I mean, I have a MERV 13 in my house right now. And we didn't have to redesign anything. I took out whatever was there. We cut in a straight through, slid it straight through it in, taped it up, and, uh, and dropped the MERV 13 filter in there. And I've had the same performance. So, and again, I, I had to fix what other people didn't do right. So, so anyway, I just remind people to complete the system, right? We're doing UV, we're doing PCO, but don't forget, you can do all this amazing technology, but if you got a cheapo one inch, you know, Home Depot filter, you're not, you're going to have a lot of filth going through your system. So, uh, so anyway, do you guys come across a lot of commercial job sites at all? Do you have contractors doing commercial? Do you, uh, where, where, how, my biggest contractor does all the post offices in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, half of New York and Delaware. Okay. Then. 
Well, he does mostly, you know, be, most of them have been, uh, been switched over to like rooftop units, gas, gas pack. Perfect. So, so yeah, I do a lot with that. Well then, just so you know, again, that guy, he might want to go through training because like I said, this morning alone, I had a, I had a training call at 8 a.m. with the New York government and, uh, for the sanitation department. And then later in the morning, I had a, I had a call on uh, commercial design for uh, a museum up in Massachusetts. So we do all the commercial stuff. <laughs> again, yeah, and, and again, all these restaurants are going to start wanting it too. To, yeah. To, to tell people that they're trying to protect them or whatever. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing for that is obviously you're dealing with, uh, you have the owner and whoever's going to pay for it has to be asked this question. What are you solving for? Because Again, there's, there's, we have big racks of coils you know, for big rooftops, but we also have package units support and everything else, but we have Airstream. So back to that blue-green graph, right? If I'm okay with a industry standard disinfection rate and I'm not trying to target a lot of airborne viruses, you don't have to go pretty advanced. But then if I'm only installing, like obviously if I have big walk-in units, we have the big racks. We do uh, rack design. We can add multiple layers of bulbs in. And then if these are big coils, I mean, sometimes I've seen applications where – these are, you know, three three racks wide and three racks tall. I mean, these are right. big coils. So and that's where this design comes in handy because these ship, like they're telescoping. They ship like a square. And then they made us pull out to reach the width of the coil that you're addressing. And then we just determine from those coil measurements, you know, do we need to have more than one rack? And then back to the question of what are you solving for? Okay, well, what's the goal of their disinfection rate? Like if they're fine with a 70 percentile disinfection rate, then maybe the standard coil, uh, the lamp spacing is fine. But if somebody's trying to reach a maximum disinfection rate, we might need to add another row of lamps in here and also make sure they're closer together because uh, you know, bulb overlap of the illumination is, and I'll show you a graph on that, is what gives you that maximum disinfection rate. So this is all stuff that you don't really have to know. I just help people understand that right. this isn't just plug and play. I'm just gonna order something off of a sheet and slap it in the system. You should commercially, you should always be asking these questions. So, and we actually have a, a, a nice guide for that, that we're sending all the contractors now that we created uh, to help them say, okay, measure this, measure that, I'll answer these questions, tell me what you're trying to solve for. So, uh, but back to your point on these smaller um, post offices, they probably don't have coils that big, but we do have this, this is popular. We do a lot of UV matrices. This is something easy you could pick off of a sheet because there's only six SKUs available. Uh, the first set of three are single bulb, and the second set of three are double bulb like this. And then the only thing else left is you determine how long the bulb needs to be. And we have some of these units go out to 22 inch bulbs. I mean, it's, it depends on, again, the advantage of this design is that's a NEMA 4X rated enclosure. So it's completely waterproof. So we put all the technology outside of the equipment. So the only thing you're inserting into the, these package units, rooftops, et cetera, is you're just cutting holes for the UV lamps to go in. So right. you're not blocking a lot of airflow. A lot of, a lot of our commercial competitors they don't, they're not sticking everything outside of the Airstream, outside the coil. They're trying to fit everything inside the equipment, and that's just not a good design. So we've been getting a lot of new business from this uh, because it's helping a lot of guys do some plug and play on these smaller rooftop units. So it sounds like he would benefit from looking at this technology as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it, I mean, I, I was just making up stuff for like a 20-ton uh, uh, chiller unit and all, all kind of stuff. So yeah. we're making up some big duct work, so. Okay. Well, and now, so speak, speaking of big duct work, <laughs> that's our AS. So again, everything is on the outside of the duct work. You're just cutting access holes for UV lamps. But again, okay. it's not one size fits all. I might have an application where if the duct work is big enough, I might not, I might have to have one of these on the left side of the duct and the one of these coming in from the right side of the duct. So the bulbs meet in the middle because the space is so wide. Uh, there's a rule that you have to have these UV lamps crossing at least 80% of the distance across the ductwork to make sure as much air is being treated by the UV bulb. And okay. then the, the daisy chaining of the UV bulb is basically ensuring a certain disinfection rate. So if somebody's trying to reach a maximum disinfection rate, you might have one, two, three of these racks in a row going down the supply duct. So as the air is passing by one set, by another set, by another set, you've been irradiated like two to three times over by these systems. So this is that question that these commercial guys have to ask is, you know, what level of disinfection rate are you okay with? Some of these organizations are like, well, we've never had anything installed. So at least getting entry level, getting at least a 70, 50 to 70% disinfection rate where we had nothing before is great. Uh, but then some of these other organizations are going for maximum because maybe they got government budgets to pay for it. I, I don't know. Um, like, like for, 
this would have to all be approved by the engineer for the post office. Do you have any literature for, the, for them to, to get, get to them that they will? Yeah, like a great entry level to not overwhelm them is, I'll send this to you after the call today. So we updated our commercial literature. So this is, everything commercially is called the UV matrix. So, and then it's just which version of it do you want, right? SI for the coil racks, 4X for the NEMA 4X, AS for Airstream. And then I'm gonna show you the new upper room design for wide open spaces. Uh, but in here, uh, they go over the, again, T3 is standard, all of our higher end bulbs. They go over why the efficiency ratings, why the bulbs are burned higher. So this will help them understand. Uh, but here, there's that blue green graph, but you notice the green is missing because Again, SI is really primarily targeted towards the surface area uh, you know, irradiation process. You're gonna get some airstream because the air is passing through it, but you're really not targeting airstream airborne virus disinfection. But then as soon as you move down here to the AS, well, there you go, okay. There's the green reappearing. We go over why they're designed. You know, these bulbs are mounted 10 inches apart and they, they point out in here that your maximum intensity of disinfection is where the glow overlaps each other. So that's why the bulbs are so close. I think this is great for your engineer to get, to help them understand how we do things. And then in the bottom right here, you can see how we talk about, hey, there's lots of different ways to apply these. Overlap on wide duct, single application. Sometimes you gotta go a couple in a row for maximum disinfection rates. Um, it's all about right here, getting the right UV dose. <laughs> So yeah, this is, I'll definitely send you this. This will be great for all your commercial guys to get them started. And then this is the upper room that I was gonna talk about next. This is the last series of our, of our commercial stuff. So upper room was actually more popular for us over in Europe. And then when all this went down, people started asking about, well, how can I address uh, increasing wide open spaces for airborne disinfection rate? So let me switch back to here. So this is the FS series, this is our upper room. Long story short, it's literally a box with two UV lamps in it. It's not rocket science. There's no motors. There's no fans. It's actually a design that's been targeted towards the natural convective air of a room. So there's cold air on the bottom of the room and warm air on the top of the room, hot air rises. Well, that's what it's based on. So what's happening here is though, due to its simplistic design, it's, we have a panel of louvers in front of the bulbs where the light is exiting the device across the top of the room. That's why it's called upper room you have to have a minimum of seven foot installation height. This cannot be eye level. You cannot have people looking obviously at the UV light. The louvers are designed to help ensure the light is, you know, staying above everybody. So now granted, I might want to mount a little higher if I'm dealing with the NBA. So those guys are a little tall. So the point here is this, here's your irradiation process, right? It's, you have cold air naturally cycling down, warm air naturally cycling up. So this is irradiating across the top of the room. This box is only about 20 inches by 14 and a half inches, and it's only six inches deep coming off the wall. It's just enough to house the bulbs and the louvers. And all of our commercial tech is auto power sensing. So all you gotta do is tap off a power somewhere behind the wall and you got your juice. We do send these now with a plug-in option. Uh, so if there is an outlet nearby, they can just plug it into an outlet or they install an outlet high up on the wall and plug it in that way. Okay. Uh, the most important thing here is as you move further away from the device, obviously you have less irradiation happening to that air that's passing by this device. So depending on how big the room is, they might need to install more than one of these. So you probably have never seen something like this before. No, I haven't. And that, that graph, is that feet? Like 80 feet and 100 feet? Is that what that is? Uh, yeah, so give me it here. Let me switch this. Okay. So here's another irradiation example, right? So you have distance. Uh, in, well, actually, this is distance in inches, sorry. So 200 yeah. inches from the device, 100, et cetera, and UV intensity. And then this is something I like to, let me switch back to that literature I'll send you. This is a great example of how a, a larger room, see how we have three boxes on the wall and they're mounted about, they're positioned about 10 feet apart. Right. So this is how you ensure overlap of that type of application if it's a wide open space. So now here's a great, here's a great question though. The museum we were talking to this morning, they said, well, do we even need something like this? Because if you guys design what we need to reach maximum disinfection rate within the air supply ducts and our entire museum has ductwork reaching every single room in every single space, and they probably have, I think he said like 50 pieces of equipment, uh, 20 of which are targeted just towards the big wide open rooms. I said, yes, if we design something for all of that, this is really just going above and beyond. Like this is something that people want to give that extra 
bell and whistle uh, because we've already addressed everything from the coil standpoint and from the ductwork supply. So if we reach the maximum disinfection rate, this is just above and beyond that. But I have some people looking to put these in to get that above and beyond, or they have spaces that don't have ductwork and they have a high enough ceiling. So they want to get that upper room disinfection rate happening in that space. So this is being looked at right now. Somebody in North Jersey, uh, it's a big, I would, what do you call them? Uh, it's, a, it's a Jewish uh, church and they, they pack a lot of people in there. So they're looking oh at God. something like this. Yeah, synagogue, thank you. So, so they're looking at something like this. So again, this is all in the literature. And the cool thing is, if you look at chapter 62 of the ASHRAE guidelines, they actually call out upper room applications in the handbook. They actually show you uh, black and white images from an old New York hospital that had them installed. They have, they show them, uh, I think a CDC site down in Brazil is shown in this application. So they do call out upper room as being a proven application that has been documented. So but obviously this is all targeted towards your commercial guys. So, right. yeah. But if you got a big guy who's doing a lot with the federal government or, well, that's right. Postal services aren't federal. I always thought that, but private held organization, <laughs> whatever yeah, they that we support anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I, again, I, I tell you what, everybody being quarantined right now, everybody loves their postal worker and their, and their UPS and their Amazon and whatever else is going on. Right. Um, now I, I, I wanted to help breeze quickly for you. I didn't want to overstep too much stuff, but is there anything stuff that's really hanging in your head that I can kind of help really get more clarification on or follow up on? So. No, I, I mean, you explained it pretty well. I mean, I, I think what I would like to go with is, 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 is the best product you have with the uh, piggyback of the other lamp and sell it that way because that's, that's you, you're selling the, your customer the best product. Right. And then I always believe in nowadays, I prefer the top down, right? Let's start with the best. And then if you don't want to spend that, that's fine. I can still step you down just as right. long as you understand what might be, I don't want to say dropping away, but you know, you're, you're dissipating some of that level because those induct units, the Solaris and the Catalyst, they're good up to 5,000 square feet. So that's going to handle most residential applications above and beyond, unless you're dealing with some of these McMansions. Uh, now, granted, if they have a system that somebody decided to zone the house by putting two separate systems in, well, now you have to double your product install because you got to treat each system and each system's supply. So that's an important clarification for residential as well. You don't, you don't have anybody like doing, um, like actually doing everything, but splitting it. Say they do, uh, do the coil on one side and do the supply on the other unit. That doesn't, you got to do both anyway. Right. I mean, again, you could tell from the training today, like that's a no bueno. <laughs> I mean, right. again, if, if we're, we have to train based on what's already been proven by the scientific method and what has been documented by the CDC and the ASHRAE, so granted, like, if you're going to half it, we know how that ends up, right? It's like, okay, well, right. great. I got a clean coil over here, but this one, I don't know what's going on with that coil. But hey, my air supply is pushing out nice, clean air here. But I mean, again, if you're in the same structure, the same building, what are you doing? Because you have one system pushing some clean air and the other one's pushing, you know, possibly contaminated air. Right. So your, your disinfection rate is going to be minimal because you don't have any consistency. So... Uh, and again, from a scalability standpoint, maybe something like the, the entry level advantage product uh, for something like that is fine. If they have two systems installed and they want to start with that and they start noticing the cleaner air, then great. They notice allergens are reducing, things of that nature. It kills we, mold, mold too, right? Yeah, that's the point. So UVC wavelength light kills live things. Like if you, if you looked at it with your eye, you will burn your retinas. If you shine on your skin for a two, you will burn your skin. Like it is not... This is not to be just, so when people say, oh, I just want to have a light in the middle of the room, you can't do that. Um, right. If you've seen, have you, have you heard of these new, um, I call them the Roomba for hospitals. They got this robot driving around with a whole bunch of long UV bulbs standing up in a circle out of the oh, middle right. of the device. Right. There's no I, human being standing in that room. There's no way. So right. they're probably, they, they, I don't know who designed these things, but it's, you know, you finish a surgery, and they probably set that robot and turn it on and everybody leaves the room and that thing probably drives around for a certain period of time and hopefully has sensors to get close to all these areas. Because again, you're not ensuring a, a maximum disinfection rate of the air. That's really targeting the surface areas for decontamination. So uh, you're going to get, because if you've got like 10, 15, 20 plus inch long bulbs, you're definitely going to get some irradiation in the air. But 
if it's on this side of the room and then it's on that side of the room, I don't know how that stuff works. So that's why I tell people, if you have HVAC going into that room, treat the system, that's an extra bell and whistle that you can do that some great salesperson sold you on for your hospital. Uh, Cause somebody tried to ask me if they could have that drive around like a museum site. And I said, uh, I can't speak to something that we don't design. And again, we're targeting HVAC. Uh, if, if you want to have an extra robot drive around the middle of the night with nobody around it, I mean, good luck. I, don't, I can't. I can't tell you what's going to happen with that. I'll, I'll let that company talk to it. So, did you ask a homeowner or whatever how many, how often they have the windows open or something like that, or do you, you know? I mean, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if you think about it, like I open up my windows once in a while. I, I mean, I have, like I said, I got two lamps in the coil. I got the induct system. As soon as I close everything up, within a few hours of air, because I never turn my fan off. That's the other thing. People are like, well, you leave your fan blowing all the time, so that leaves the lights on. Well, well, let me help you understand something. That is, your lights are not hooked to the fan switch. The oh, lights okay. are twining 24 seven. I don't care if you shut the whole system down, those lights never go off. Because as soon as you turn that light off on the coil, you've just allowed whatever could possibly be around that coil to, to come back to life or start new life or whatever. The whole point of UV light is, especially on a, on a surface application, as long as that is shining, anything else new that lands there, whatever, you're inhibiting growth. You're preventing growth from even happening. So okay. if, I, if I come in and I clean a coil. constantly on. Right, exactly. And these things use less electricity than a normal light bulb. So that's why residentially, we just need 24 volts. So you, you a little transformer, plug it, plug and play, you're done. Um, if I turn my fan off, well, now I'm not filtering my air either. So I always crack up with people like that. All my contractor buddies tell, tell me, they, dude, just leave your fan on. They, now with these new energy efficient motors and everything else, he's like, you could turn your cooling off or your heating off. But he's like, have the fan do its job, pulling the air throughout the house, getting rid of the stagnation, making the filter do its job, right? Because if I turn the fan off, now I'm not filtering anything. I just have stagnant air all over the house. So the way I do it at my house at home is my fan runs every, I think it's like every 20 minutes, it runs for five minutes or something like that if, if I'm not using the HVAC system. Okay. Well, and then, so here's the beauty of that. So, but see, if you're looking for maximum airborne disinfection rate, then you're inhibiting that process because you only have air now being pulled back through that process every five minutes. And maybe that's enough. I'm not the scientist or the engineer that can figure out that level of disinfection for the amount of air because I don't know how much square footage you have and how much CFMs and that rate and all that. But that might be okay because, again, if you have UV installed and you're moving your house's air through that at least every five minutes, that's better than nothing. So, uh, but yeah, I just leave my fan on. I let it filter and do its job. So... Okay. But I also have like that nice heavy duty filter in here too. That Merv 13's trapping all kinds of good stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so these are good questions. A lot of people are like, oh, can I just turn the lights off? I said, no. I mean, when you get our kits, we give like this little clear plastic thing. And if you have a soft piece of duct, you just plunge it right through the fiberboard or through the soft duct, or you just drill a, a pilot hole and you stick that in there. And when I walk by, if I want to see the lights are on, I just look. And I can see that thing glowing. I know the light's on. So, but also once I put that catalyst in, I have the monitoring device there anyway on the power head. So I can just walk by and look at that and see that everything's working. So. Uh, and that, and duct work has insulation on li like duct liner in it. That doesn't bother these at all. And, it, and that the liner can butt up against them or whatever. So remember that. So the installation guidelines advise that if you have wiring nearby, like within 12 inches or less of the bulb, Maybe you want to cover that with like some silver tape or something like that because it has been proven that over a long period of time, UV light over and over again, 24-7, it might degrade some of that plastic insulation or whatever that material is on, on wiring, for example. But I don't have any wiring near where my UV lights are, but I, we always want to call that out. When you're doing your install, look where your wiring is. Don't have it right up by the bulb because it can degrade that because, again, it's a very destructive form of UV light. But we have, I, have, I have this installed on my plenum right now. Right. And the only thing he did was uh, once he cut the access hole to get the catalyst to go in and, and then it, everything, the carbon strips are collapsed. So once I, uh, once I mount it, he actually added a piece of uh, he custom cut a piece of metal to uh, inside and outside to help create a better anchor. He, he's, he was OCDing everything. He didn't want the thing you to have, possibly you have duck board in your system. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so once you had that installed, then you deploy the catalyst uh, panels and they lock into an open position. So it increases as much exposure as the air is passing through. And it's funny, I could cook with 
garlic, stuff like that within a couple hours, I don't smell anything. So it's deodorizing everything. So, um, but yeah, UV light 24 seven, whether your system's running or not. That's why usually when you're installing it off of the, like he tapped power off of the control center in the furnace, he made sure he had constant power. So, uh, I mean, unless I kill the whole system, everything stays lit. And that's why the bulbs are rated for hours. And that's why you figured out a 9,000 hour bulb, mathematically, I'm good for a year. 18,000 hour T3, I'm good for two years. So okay. so for you, for example, if you're trying to keep it simple and offer the best solutions for the contractors, you might want to make sure everything is a T3 product because then there's no inconsistency on education. Okay, two year PMs across the board. I've got the better bulb. It's protected from temperatures. I'm going to get that maximum burn out of it, maximum efficiency. But I got some guys like, nah, I'll still go with an entry level and give them like the dirt cheap option you can come in the door with. That's going to be your decision on what you want to market to your guys. And I'll be happy to guide you guys accordingly on that. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Anything else you have? No. Uh, you okay. Basically answer all my questions. I'm not going to remember everything until I go back over the video. But uh, That's what, you know. Calls and emails are for, you know. <laughs> right. Well, let me kill the recording here for you. I, I appreciate your time. And let me shut that down.